Act 1. Exterior established Pawtucket Brewery, day. Interior Pawtucket Brewery, Peter's office, day. Peter is working at his desk. Angela enters and hands him a pamphlet. Here, Griffin. This has the information regarding the company's new workers' compensation policies. Peter reads the pamphlet. Sweet. So uh, we get to play kickball at recess now? No, Griffin. Workers' compensation is money you get if you're injured on the job and can't work. Peter examines the pamphlet. Hold on a minute. You're telling me that if I get hurt in a job, you'll pay me to sit at home? Yes. Reveal. Peter is halfway out a window, but he is stuck. <clears throat> Griffin, what the hell are you doing? I got stuck trying to jump out the window. Your office is on the first floor. It seems I got ahead of myself. Well, good day, Angela. Exterior, Pawtucket Brewery, parking lot, sunset. The parking lot is nearly empty. Angela walks to her car. Peter's signature giggle <laughs> echoes throughout the parking lot. Angela looks around, shrugs, and walks to her car. Reveal, Peter is hiding in between two cars. Angela's car drives towards Peter's hiding spot, and Peter jumps in front of her car. He rolls over the top of her car and lands behind it. Angela rolls down her window. Yay, free money. Griffin, were you aware that you needed to be on the clock to receive workers' comp? I was not. Did you clock out? Yes, that I did. Now what did you learn? I have to read company pamphlets more carefully. Good. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Interior, Pawtucket Brewery, assembly line, day. Peter stands still. He scans the factory intently, looking for an opportunity to harm himself. Come on, Peter. If you're going to pull this off, then you have to be even more creative than the guys that write the Green Lantern comics. Interior, comic book writer's room, day. The writers sit around a long table, and the meeting is being led by the head writer. All right. We need uh, ideas to make the Green Lantern a more exciting character. What if we made one of his villains the Yellow Lantern? Yes, you're brilliant. What else? A Red Lantern. You're on a roll. Keep going. Blue Lantern, Pink Lantern, Orange Lantern, Purple Lantern. I'm beginning to believe you're more prophet than writer, my friend. <laughs> Interior, Pawtucket Brewery, assembly line, back to scene. Peter continues to look around. Looks at a forklift driving by. Looks at an assembly line machine looks at a large pallet of beers that haven't been packaged yet. Bingo. Peter walks over to the pallet and pretends to be inspecting it. Hmm. Everything seems to be in order here. Peter takes a can from the bottom of the pallet. The beer tower doesn't fall. It just fills in the missing gap. Damn it. Peter walks from the pallet as the janitor is cleaning the floor. The wet floor sign is on the janitor's cart. Peter slips and slides into the stairwell. He screams as he tumbles down the stairs. He lands at the bottom with a thump and it looks like both his legs are broken. Angela walks up. Well, it looks like you're getting workers comp, Griffin. Victory! <laughs> Please call an ambulance. Exterior, established, Griffin's house, day. Interior, Griffin's house, living room, day. Peter sits on the couch. Both of his legs are in casts, and his right arm is in a sling. Peter is on the phone. Hey, Joe, you want to come over and play video games or something? Sorry, Peter, I have to go to work. Now you should hurt yourself and get work has come. Be careful, though. You wouldn't want to cripple yourself and become one of those people. <sighs> I'm hanging up now. The phone clicks. Peter puts down the phone. Chris, Brian, Meg, and Lois, who is carrying Stewie, walk behind the couch towards the door. Peter, we're heading out now, so if you need anything, if you need something, you'll have to wait. Oh, come on. No one wants to keep me company. Chris, Meg, don't you want to watch TV with your old man? Sorry, Dad. We have to go to school. And I have lots of errands to run. Use this time to think about the consequences of your actions. Brian? I'm sorry, Peter, but I can't, I can't babysit you today. I'm still mentally exhausted from that time I took you to the movies. Interior, movie theater, day. Peter and Brian sit in a crowded theater. The trailers have just ended, and it's the short that the, he that the theaters play before the movie. Remember, recording is illegal. Don't talk during the movie. Also, don't use your phone. Simply, don't be a dick. Oh, my. Peter? Hey, you trying to start something? I wouldn't have to if you just behaved during Justice League. That movie was garbage. That doesn't give you the right to... No, it's the film's responsibility to keep me entertained. So I don't, you know, you know what? I don't have to take this. Peter storms out. Brian reluctantly follows him. Interior, Griffin House, back to scene. The family leaves. Lois is the last to leave. Binge watch a show on Netflix. That'll make the time pass quickly. Lois leaves. Peter takes the remote. Marvel shows. If it's on the MCU, no one is interested. Paradise PD, one of the main characters is a talking dog. That's not very believable. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Imprisoned by a cult leader, Midwesterner Kimmy Schmidt is freed after 15 years. This sounds like a compelling drama. 
Peter presses play. Theme song plays. This is a comedy? That's a dark premise for a comedy. Montage. Peter nodding his head and getting into the show. Peter laughing. Peter softly crying. Peter clapping and cheering. Mm -hmm. You go, girl! Get your life back! Back to scene. Peter wiping tears from his eyes. That is quite possibly the most powerful piece of cinema I've ever had the pleasure to experience. Next episode. Peter takes the remote and clicks the button. The theme song plays and Peter sings along. Unbreakable! Stay alive, damn it! It's a miracle! TV goes blank. What the hell? Peter clicks the buttons on the remote. Work, you stupid TV! Two eyes and a mouth appear on the TV. Ransomware, a computer virus that has taken Peter's smart TV hostage. I am Ransomware. If you want control of your electronics back, then I demand you use your phone to wire me $5,000. You sick son of a bitch. Kidnapping a kidnapping victim is low. Fine, I'll give you whatever you want. Peter types all the information he lists into his phone and sends it to Ransomware as a text. Take my social security number and credit card information. That not enough? Ransomware's eyes widen in shock. Well, here's my bank account numbers. My mother's maiden name is Malloy, and my first pet's name was Thundercat. Now give her back. Ransomware is grinning. Very well. Thank you. The show begins playing again. Peter takes a sigh of relief. <sighs> You're safe now, Kimmy. You're safe. The family enters the living room. Hey, Peter. How was your day? Mostly good. Got scary at the end. Oh, no. What do you mean? It's fine, Lois, but I had to rescue Kimmy Schmidt. The point is, kids, your dad's a hero. Kimmy Schmidt? Isn't that the name of the Netflix show? Peter, I need you to tell me exactly what happened. Oh, you want a retelling of my valiant feats? Very well. I guess I could indulge you. Gather round, family, and I'll tell you a tale. Interior, Griffin House, day, flash forward. You gave away all your personal information to save a fictional character? Stewie stands up and goes upstairs. He can be heard building a machine from his bedroom. This is not the hero's welcome I was expecting. Oh, really? Were you expecting me to bake you a cake for your stupidity? Well, if you wouldn't mind. Do you even realize what you've done? How dare you? I saved that poor girl from another traumatizing experience. Hasn't she been through enough? You did the right thing, Dad. <laughs> Stewie re-enters the room and approaches Brian as Peter and Lois continue to yell in the background. Come with me. Stewie St- drags Brian by the collar to the staircase. Stewie, no. Interior, Stewie's bedroom, day. Stewie drags Brian into his bedroom and then types on a computer that is attached to a big machine, which has a bunch of flashing lights. There's two identical beds in front of the machine. There's two wires coming from the machines attached to two separate helmets, which sit on the beds. Stewie, I know you're young and might not understand, but we're in the middle of a family crisis. I have to go back. Whoa, what's that? Further proof that you are just as moronic as the others. Of course I understand. The fat man gave away all of our property to rescue a television character. And our family will be living on these streets if you and I don't intervene. That doesn't explain what this machine is. This, Brian, is a device I created that will put us into the internet. We will be able to upload our consciousness online and navigate the internet as if it were a city. Stewie, that's incredible. I know, but we haven't got much time. Stewie puts one of the helmets on Brian's head. Now lay on the bed. We must work fast. Brian does as directed. Stewie hits a few more buttons. Stewie puts the other helmet on himself and lays down on the bed. Stewie hits one more button, and they both pass out. Interior, light tunnel. Brian and Stewie fly through a tunnel of moving light that makes them look like they're moving at light speed. Exterior, internet city, day. Brian and Stewie stand in the center of a huge metropolis. There are huge skyscrapers with knockoff names of Titan technology companies. Brian looks like a mashup of himself and the Digimon Gabumon. Stewie is dressed as Mega Man. Wow, this place is beautiful. Wait, why do I look like this? I was unsure of what type of dangers we would encounter while roaming the internet and wanted to ensure we were prepared. I turned you into a Digimon, and I'm Mega Man. Aren't I adorable? Uh, Not sure what a Digimon is, but this is pretty cool. So I have powers? Yes! You have the ability to shoot fire blast like projectiles from your mouth when you say the phrase BLUE BLASTER! I have to say a phrase? Yes, it's like a magic spell. Uh, Seems like a hindrance on any fight we might get into. Yeah, but it looks cool and cinematic. Try it out! All right. Tight close-up on Brian. The animation looks more intense and dramatic, like an anime. There's an echo to Brian's voice. Blue blaster! Brian shoots the fire at a nearby skyscraper, blasting a huge hole in the wall. The dust settles. The scene returns to its original animation. Impressive. I withdraw my skepticism. Told you. Now we must get started. We don't have any time to waste. You're right. Digital envelope appears in front of Brian and Stewie. What's that? Pop up! Don't touch! Too late. Brian touched it. 
Pictures of MILFS in lingerie appear in front of Brian. Multiple horny milfs in your area want to meet you now. Oh boy, well, I don't want to be rude. Let me just... Brian reaches to touch one of the photos. Stewie stops his hand from touching it. No, Brian! There are no milfs! There have never been any milfs! End of Act One. Act Two. Exterior. Internet City. Day. Stewie and Brian walk down the street. This place is massive. Uh, where do we even begin to start looking? I suppose where it all started would make sense. We should go to Netflix and see if we can find any clues that will lead us to the thief. Keep an eye out for Wreck-It Ralph. He's been breaking the internet instead of working on an emotionally satisfying sequel. Interior, Disney boardroom, day. Writer number two is pitching Ralph Breaks the Internet to a room full of executives. So I was thinking, Ralph and Vanellope go on the internet and break it. Nailed it! Let's go to lunch. But that's really only the starting point. I don't even have details of the plot or a strong enough theme to rival the first film. Don't need it. But I don't have a B plot line yet for the beloved side characters that audiences fell in love with. Listen, you struck oil. Stop digging. Let's move on. Interior, Netflix, day. Brian and Stewie enter through the front door. The walls look like the movie cues on the home screen of Netflix. Stewie's focused on typing on his iPad. Wow. To think that Netflix started as a rival to Blockbuster. What's Blockbuster? Exactly. Not too long ago, they were a DVD rental service that used the mail. And now, they are one of the top content providers in the world. I wonder what their process is. Well, it looks like those two guys are in charge here. There are two guys throwing cues for multiple shows and movies against the wall. Most of them are not sticking to the wall. (laughs) Well, that's disappointing. What are you doing anyway? I'm locating our TV's IP address. And then we'll look, we'll work our way forward. The iPad makes a beeping noise. Stewie looks and sees the cue to the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Of course! There it is, Brian! Behind the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt cue! But how are we going to get behind it? Won't the show turn on if we touch it? Wreck It Ralph bursts through the front doors and knocks all the cues off the walls. Oh boy! I'm breaking the movie cues on Netflix! Interior, Disney boardroom, day. Great work! This is why we're the industry leader. Interior Netflix, back to scene. Ralph knocks down the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt cue, revealing a black hole vortex. Now's our chance. Brian and Stewie run over to the portal. My device is saying this portal belongs to the ransomware, but there's no telling where it'll take us. Are you ready? Brian nods. Brian and Stewie jump into the portal. Interior, Pornhub nightclub, day. This seedy site looks like a shady nightclub. There's club music playing. There are cues on the walls like at Netflix. They have photos of porn stars and clips of them in suggestive situations. Brian is fascinated by the porn. Stewie returns to working on his iPad. Oh, wow. Mia Malkova, Dylan Harper, Janice Griffith. Easy, Weinstein. Don't you dare wander off, or I swear I'll have Lois and the fat man neuter you. Jeez, that's excessive. You have been warned! Stewie looks up from his iPad. The signal is sending us to that direct... Stewie pauses and processes what he's looking at. Is that Princess Ariel and Princess Rapunzel? Yep. Why would they be here? Are they kissing? Probably not all they're gonna do. You pervert! What? What are they? Why? They aren't even from the same story! This is completely contradicts the source material! It doesn't matter. Rule 34. What's Rule 34? Uh, well, I don't think that's really something for a baby to know. Brian, we are in the center of the porn hub. We are all well past that point. Fair enough. Rule 34 states that if it exists, then there is a porn of it. If there is no porn of it, then give it a month. So by that rule, anything famous within the public sphere is subjected to this rule. But, but my family and I are on a famous show. Stewie, trust me. This really isn't a road you want to walk down. You're probably right. Damn, this is more distasteful than when the fat man played the floor is lava. Exterior cemetery, morning. Peter is balancing on top of a tombstone. Floor is lava. Peter leaps up from one tombstone to another. Floor is lava. Peter leaps again to another tombstone. Floor is lava. Peter leaps to another tombstone, but this one has a grieving family in front of it. There's an elderly woman crying. She cries even harder when Peter lands on her husband's tombstone. I'm sorry for your loss. Peter leaps to the next tombstone. Floor is lava. Interior, Pornhub nightclub, back to scene. The iPad begins to beep again. I've got the signal! Brian and Stewie run to the bathroom of the nightclub. Interior, Pornhub nightclub, bathroom. The bathroom is filthy and covered in graffiti. Brian and Stewie burst through the door. Where is it? 
This is not ideal. Reveal. Stewie's looking in the bathroom stall. The portal is in the toilet. We have to go in the toilet? That's disgusting. The internet is a gross place. I warned you before we came here. You said nothing about going inside a toilet. The entire internet is a toilet! Now, enough of this squabbling. We have to go. Stewie pushes Brian in the toilet. You did! Stewie jumps in the portal. Interior, InfoWars newsroom. Dark and desolate. There are small fires in the room. Alex Jones' robot screams at a camera. This place is terrifying. Alex Jones' voice is amplified by multiple speaker phones. The globalists hate you and your family. They have two goals in life. First, they want to turn all the frogs gay. Then they will come and murder all the white people. Is that what you want? I won't allow it. I'm the only one ready to stop Satan. The only way to stop the evil of Satan is to buy my extreme Viking protein powder that's designed to give you superpowers to fight out the forces of darkness oozing from our government. Take all my money! Just protect me! Stewie takes out his wallet. Brian drags Stewie towards backstage. Let's go. Interior. Infowars newsroom. Backstage. There's an ugly little gremlin-like monster rolling around in a pile of cash. This is the real Alex Jones. Money! Money! Ha <laughs> Money! Stewie and Brian enter. Stewie takes a step backwards and aims his Mega Man arm gun at the real Alex Jones, who hisses. What the hell is that? I think... I think that's Alex Jones. Uh, you see, Stewie? That robot that scared you was a fake persona designed to scare people into giving this cretin money to fix problems that he made up. Oh, wow. I feel a lot better. Thanks, Bri. No problem. Now, where's our next portal? Let's see. Stewie types on the iPad. It's there. Stewie points to a picture of President Trump. Behind that autographed picture Trump gave Alex Jones when he validated Alex Jones as a reporter in the 2016 election. Brian and Stewie take the photo off the wall, revealing the portal. They jump through it. Interior, Twitter, dusk. This place is filled with multiple floating rocks in the sky. No surface below. There are rectangular tweets flying about in every direction. This place is just chaos. Where are we? Twitter, Brian. Where it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. It only matters if you're the loudest voice. There's a Russian robot on one of the nearby rocks. The tweet appears out of thin air when he speaks. I am American, and I am upset by our leaders. We should all stay home and not vote. Hashtag Mega 2020. Sin. The tweet flies into the Twitter void. Reveal. There's a troll next to the Russian robot. The tweet appears out of thin air when he speaks. Brie Larson is an ugly Captain Marvel. They should, could have found a chick to fill the suit better. Hashtag Mega 2020 The tweet flies into the Twitter void. Reveal. There's a hipster blogger next to the troll. The tweet appears out of thin air when she speaks. I'm offended by this tweet about Brie Larson. She's beautiful. You're welcome, Internet. I did my part. I'm going to go make a kale smoothie and explain to people why my voice, my, my vote doesn't matter. Send. The tweet flies into the Twitter void. We're just going to keep spiraling as a country, aren't we? Well, every empire in history has fallen. We'll see if America is the exception or another example. A shame. Hey, did you find the next portal yet? Over there. Stewie points across the void. We're going to have to leap from rock to rock and avoid being struck by the tweets. Why? Do they hurt? Yes, but only emotionally. Look at that guy. Random guy appears on a rock. Today is such a wonderful day. Let's see what's going on in the world. The random guy is struck by a tweet. Um... No, I'm sad. And to make it across this void, we're going to have to be even more determined than Peter when he wanted to get out of Meg's improv show. Interior, Peter's car, night. Peter's driving. A text message alert beeps. Peter reads the text. Super. Hey, Dad, super excited that you're coming to my show tonight. I really love improv, and I can't wait to share this art with you. Peter looks forward with conviction. Takes a deep breath. Peter deliberately crashes his car into a telephone pole. Exterior, roadside, moments later. Peter is talking to a cop. Good evening, officer. There are quite a few opened and unopened beers, as I have been drinking heavily. Feel free to help yourself. There's an unregistered firearm in the glove box. I believe I have a couple kilos of cocaine in the trunk. Save me from improv. Cop handcuffs Peter. Don't worry, sir. I'll take you somewhere. Improv can never find you. Interior. Jail cell. Day. Peter lays back on his bed. <sighs> Worth it. Interior. Twitter. Back to scene. All right. Don't forget your blue blaster! Stewie leaps from rock to rock like a superhero shooting tweets along the way. Brian follows Stewie's lead, but is stumbling and fumbling. Blue! Ugh, what is my line? Stewie looks back. There's a tweet approaching Brian. Brian! Behind you! Brian looks back. He ducks, but the tweet is on a crash course. Stewie runs to Brian. He leaps on Brian's back and shoots the tweet in time. Stewie, thank you. Focus! Your line is blue blaster! Now you run, I'll shoot! 
Brian runs and Stewie rides him, shooting any tweet that gets close. They're almost at the portal. Tweets swarm towards them from all directions. Stewie tries to shoot them, but he's not quick enough. Hurry, Brian! There are too many! Brian picks up his speed and leaps into the portal. The tweets shatter as they hit the portal. Interior, Ransom wears lair. It's a dark cave filled with spider webs. Electrical pulses flow through individual strands. That was close. Yes, but I think we're near the end of our journey. Stewie points at a giant spider monster. This is ransomware. Ransomware pulls data, which looks like a long silver barcode, out of the webbing. That must be the ransomware's true form. He looks pretty ferocious. Yes, but he pretty much undercuts all of his intimidation by storing all the data in that big sack with a dollar sign on it. Reveal. Ransomware is indeed putting the data into a giant sack with a dollar sign on it. End of Act 2. Act 3. Interior. Ransomware's lair. Brian and Stewie peek at ransomware while hiding behind a cave wall. You got a plan? He's pretty large, so the only thing we got going for us is the element of surprise. I say we split up and flank him on opposite sides. We might be able to overpower him before he gets the chance to fight back. Just be careful, Stewie. We don't know what that thing is capable of. Could have more surprises up its sleeve than Liam Neeson at a karaoke bar. Interior, karaoke bar, night. Stewie, Brian, and a small crowd watch Liam Neeson perform the song Shut Up and Dance With Me by Walk the Moon. Liam Neeson speaks the words in a dark vocal tone like in Taken. He does not sing. Don't you dare look back. Keep your eyes on me. I said, you're holding back. She said, shut up and dance with me. Interior, ransomware's lair. Brian and Stewie are on opposite ends of the lair, hiding behind giant boulders. Stewie carefully looks out to get in eyesight of Brian. They see each other. Stewie nods at Brian. Stewie leaps out from behind the boulder, shooting his arm gun at ransomware, but the shots do no damage. Brian takes a deep breath. Blanks. Shit, lime. Ransomware grabs Stewie and slams him against the cave wall. He pins Stewie against the wall and breathes close to his face. Ah! Blue blaster, you moron! Oh, yeah. Again, tight close-up on Brian. The animation looks more intense and dramatic, like an anime. There's an echo to Brian's voice. Blue blaster. blaster. Brian shoots a blue flame at Ransomware. Dust falls from the ceiling. Ransomware is unfazed. Scene returns to its normal animation. He's too strong. I, I don't know what to do. Stewie screams in agony. Ah! Stewie! Brian glows white. Black screen. A digivice appears and a white light shoots out of it. The Digimon theme song plays. Off-screen voices sing the lyrics. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. The light leads to Brian, who is standing on a white mandala made of light. The word Brianmon is written in multiple languages and float in the background. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Brian begins to spin slowly and then spins rapidly. Brian Mon digivolves to... Brian begins to transform into a giant wolf. A change into digital champions to save the digital world. Brian has transfer- transformed into a giant wolf that looks like a mix between himself and Garuramon. The word Baruramon is written in multiple languages and floats in the background. Bryruramon! Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Giggity. Interior, ransomware's lair, back to scene. Brian charges at ransomware. Get off my boy. Huh? Brian tackles ransomware with his head. Ransomware slams into the cave wall and rocks fall on it. Brian catches Stewie on his nose. Brian, you saved me. Of course, Stewie. I'd never let anything happen to you. You're my boy. Stewie hugs Brian's snout. Now what's my line? This time it's Howling Blaster. Once more, tight close up on Brian. The animation looks more intense and dramatic like an anime. Brian turns to Ransomware, who's struggling to stand up. There's a rage behind Brian's eyes. There's an echo to Brian's voice. Howling Blaster! A powerful blue beam shoots from Brian's mouth and disintegrates Ransomware. The blast leaves a huge hole in the cave wall. The scene's animation returns to normal. Phenomenal work, Brian. Now all we have to do is return all this data to the original owners. A rumble comes from the cave wall. That might not be so easy. I think we have company. An army of Russian bots, Nigerian princes, MAGA enthusiasts, internet trolls, alt-right trolls, bloggers, viruses, and every evil the internet has to offer is climbing through the hole trying to get the money back. 
I haven't been this blindsided since we found our new man. Interior, City Hall, Auditorium Day. Peter stands in front of a podium and addresses the town of Quahog. I know these past few months have been hard since we lost our beloved mayor, Adam West. Everyone has their favorite. However, in our hearts, you'll forever be our Batman. Now, we have to be strong and move on to the next stage of our lives. It's what Adam would want. It's time to find a new leader of Quahog, and I nominate Michael Keaton. The town gasps and whispers to each other. Hear me out. Michael Keaton has put on the cape and followed in Mayor West's footsteps once before, and I believe Michael Keaton can do it again. I accept. Reveal. Michael Keaton, Oscar-nominated actor, second live-action Batman, is standing at the back of the auditorium. He walks down the aisle. The townspeople stare in awe. Holy crap, Michael Keaton. We were just talking about you. I know, Peter. What are you doing here? Well, whenever someone says my name three times, I appear. That's why I accepted the part in Beetlejuice. The character's story connected me with me on an emotional level. May I? Uh, of course. People of Quahog, it'll be the greatest privilege of my life to continue Mayor Adam West's legacy one more time. I will become the unpredictable, unstable mayor, no, hero, that this town deserves. It is my honor to accept this responsibility. Thank you. Mort raises his hand. Aren't we supposed to have an election? Michael walks to Mort while continuing to make the shh sound. Michael is making intense eye contact with Mort. Michael moves his finger to cover Mort's mouth, still continuing to make the shh sound. Michael moves his finger from Mort's mouth to his own mouth two more times, still continuing to make the shh sound. Michael kisses his fingertip and places it gently on Mort's lips. I am the rightful heir. Yeah, this is a good fit. Interior, ransomware's lair, back to scene. Brian and Stewie square off for the fight. I can send all the data back to its owners, but I'm going to need you to hold off that army. Do you think it can do it? I'll try. Brian charges into battle. Stewie runs to the money sack. He shoots down the few people that are ahead of him. Stewie climbs up the money bag. A troll's legs are sticking out of the money bag. Stewie pulls the troll out of the bag. The troll throws punches. Stewie dodges them and then slides under the troll's legs. Stewie shoots the troll in the back and launches him off the money sack. Stewie takes out his iPad and gets to work. I'm in place, Brian. How long can you hold them off? Brian bites and swipes at enemies while he talks. I don't know, Stewie. Even more monsters storm the field. There's so many of them. You might need to digivolve again. How? Your evolution is triggered by extreme emotional distress. Think of something sad. Something that upsets you on a visceral level. Like what? I don't know. Think of 9-11. Sandy Hook. This isn't working. The ending of Toy Story 3. Brian begins to glow. You... You have some serious reflection on your moral compass. Brian transforms into a smaller wolf, but he's covered in armor and missiles. Brian looks like a combination of himself and Metal Gararuramon. Metal Brairuramon! Two blades come out of his shoulders and act like wings. He launches into the air and soars like a fighter jet. Whoa, Stewie, line! Ice Wolf Claw! One more time now, tight close up on Brian. The animation looks more intense and dramatic, like an anime. There's an echo to Brian's voice. Ice Wolf Claw! Claw. Claw. Compartments on every possible body part of Brian open and shoot a missile. The entire field is blown to smithereens. All of the bad guys are decimated. No survivors. Brian lands next to Stewie. I think we did it. Did you return all the data? Sure did. We crushed it even better than when the fat man sings along to the radio. Interior. Peter's car. Day. Peter's driving. The song Despacito plays. Despacito. I would like some taquitos. I wouldn't say no to fajitas. I really love burritos. Despacito. Interior, ransomware's lair. Back to scene. Didn't we already have a cutaway where Peter was in a car? Yeah, I think so. Hmm, seems kind of lazy. Does it really matter, Brian? We won! Let's go home. Exterior, established Griffin House. Day. Interior, Griffin House. Living room. Day. Lois and Peter are still yelling at each other. Brian and Stewie enter. Peter's phone beeps. Peter checks it. No way. Lois, the bank just emailed me. The thief returned all the money and personal information. See? Everything worked itself out. Just like that time I got out of that ticket. Interior, Peter's car, day. Peter drives as the song changes to The Devil Went Down to Georgia by Charlie Daniels. Peter's eyes go wide. Peter stares at the radio. Interior, cop car, day. Cop number two is parked on the side of the road drinking his coffee. Peter drives by cop number two. He's playing a fiddle. No hands on the wheel. The devil went down to Georgia, blares out the windows. Interiors, 
Interior. Peter's car. Day. Peter's talking to the cop. Any chance you can let me off with a warning? That depends. If you can play better than me. Cop number two reveals he has his own fiddle. Exterior. Roadside. Day. Peter and cop number two play their fiddles side by side to the song The Devil Went Down to Georgia. Exterior. Roadside. Flash forward. Peter and cop number two shake hands. Well, I can admit when I've been bested. Please take this golden fiddle as proof of what you did here today. Cop number two pulls a golden fiddle from behind his back and presents it to Peter, who is taken aback. Peter carefully takes the fiddle. Thank you. I'm humbled. Interior. Griffin House. Living room. Back to scene. That's the third cutaway where Peter is driving, and this second where he's been pulled over by police. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just odd. Yeah, I see it now. Good thing we're addressing it in the show, or people would have a huge problem with that otherwise well-written joke. Fade out. End of show.